Hi guys, today we're going to look at how we can easily control animation transitions from our scripts. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to click like and subscribe, and if you'd like to support our work and get access to the source code, you can find us on Patreon. Ok, we'll start with this scene that has a character and some obstacles. The character has a character controller component attached, that is used to move the character around and handle collisions with the obstacles. We've also set up a Cinemachine camera to follow our character around. We created this scene in the earlier videos of our 3D platformer series, so take a look if you want to know how it was done. At the moment, our character isn't animated and just glides around the scene. We're going to replace this with an animated character from Mixamo. Mixamo is a free library containing thousands of character animations. We have a dedicated video on this that goes into detail on all the available options if you want to know more. First of all, we'll go to the Characters tab. We'll scroll down to the bottom and choose this character called Doozy. We'll click Download. In the Format drop-down we'll choose FBX for Unity and then we'll click Download. We'll navigate to the Assets folder of our project and save the file there. If we switch back to Unity, we can see the character has been loaded into the assets. Now we can replace our original character with this one. Before we delete the original, let's have a look at the components attached to it. It has a character controller and our player movement script. We'll need to remember to add both of these to our new character. Let's delete the original from the hierarchy. Then we'll drag the new character into the hierarchy. At the moment, you'll notice that we don't have any textures on our character. This is because they are embedded in the FBX file. To extract them, we'll click on the Asset, click on the Materials tab in the Inspector, and then click on Extract Textures. We can then select a folder to extract to. We'll get this pop-up regarding an issue with a normal map, which we can just click on Fix Now to resolve. Now we have our new character, we need to allow the player to control it. We'll click on Add Component and add our player movement script back in. We'll set the movement speed to 5 and the rotation speed to 720. We'll leave the jump speed at 0 as we're not going to animate the jump just yet. We'll click on Add Component again and search for the character controller component. We'll set the center to 0.9 on the Y axis and we'll set the height to 1.7. We also need to update our camera to follow the new character. We'll click on our virtual camera in the hierarchy. Then we'll drag the new character into the follow slot. While we're here, we'll also change some of our camera settings to get a better view. We'll change the rotation to 20 on the x-axis. And we'll zoom in a little by setting the camera distance to 5. Let's press play to try this out. Now we have our new character moving around in our scene. The next step is to animate the character to make the movement look more natural. We'll stop the game and switch back to Mixamo to download some animations. When our character is standing still, we want to play an idle animation. We'll click on the Animations tab and search for Idle. We'll scroll down and select the Breathing Idle animation. We'll leave all the settings as they are and click Download. We don't want the character to be included in the download, so we'll select Without Skin. Then we'll click Download and save to our Assets folder. If we switch back to Unity, we can see the animation has loaded in our assets. By default, the animation is set to just play once and then stop. We want our animation to loop forever, so we need to tick the Loop Time checkbox in the Inspector. We'll also check Loop Pose, which will ensure the animation loops seamlessly. We need to click the Apply button to save these changes. To add the animation to our character, we'll expand the asset. Then we can just drag the curved triangle animation icon onto the character in the hierarchy. If we click on the character in the hierarchy and look in the inspector, we can see that it now has an animator component. An animation controller has also been created and assigned. If we double click on this, it will open the animator window, which shows our animation states. This is saying that on entry, the idle animation will play. Let's press play to try this out. The idle animation will now play repeatedly. 
Our character looks much better when standing still, but we now need to transition to a running animation when moving. Let's go back to Mixamo and search for a running animation. We'll select this animation. In the preview window, we can now see our character running. At the moment, it runs off into the distance and then loops back to the start. If we check the In Place checkbox, it will change to running on the spot. This is what we want as we're going to control the movement from our script. It is possible to have the animation actually drive the movement using a feature called Root Motion. We'll have a look at this in a future video, but for now we'll keep it simple. Let's click Download and save it to our Assets folder. Back in Unity, we'll select the new animation asset and set it to loop as we did previously. We'll then expand the asset and drag the animation onto the character. If we switch back to the Animator tab, we can now see a box for our running animation. Next, we need to tell Unity that we want our character to be able to transition from idle to running. To do this, we'll right-click on the idle state and select Make Transition. We'll then click on the running state to link them together. Let's click on the transition and expand the settings section in the inspector. At the moment, the transition is set to have an exit time. This means that it will transition from idle to running after a certain amount of time has passed. The exit time is in normalised time rather than real time. This means that the exit time value represents the percentage of the animation that has played. So at the moment, we will transition from idle to running after about 97% of the idle animation has played. The transition duration is how long it will take to smoothly transition from one animation to the other. This is in real time but can be switched to normalised time by unticking the fixed duration checkbox. So at the moment, our character will start in the idle state. After 97% of the animation has played, it will then take 0.25 seconds to change over to the running animation. Let's press play to see this in action. Now our character smoothly transitions from idle to running. The next thing we need to do is control when this transition happens from within our script. Let's stop the game and switch back to the animator. We're going to change the transition from having an exit time to being triggered by a boolean parameter. We can add a boolean parameter by clicking the plus button in the left hand panel and selecting bool. We'll call this parameter is moving. Now we can use this parameter as a condition for triggering the transition. We'll click on the transition and uncheck the has exit time checkbox. Then we'll click on the plus button in the conditions section. This has added the condition we want. When the is moving parameter is set to true, the character will transition from idle to running. We also want to do the reverse and transition back to idle when the character isn't moving. Let's right click on the running state and add a transition back to idle. We'll uncheck the has exit time checkbox and add a condition. This time we'll change it to trigger when is moving is false. Now that we've got our transition set up, we need to set the animation parameter at the correct times in our script. The first thing we need to do is get access to the animator component. We'll add a private field for this. And we'll get it in the start method. We can then use the setBool method to set our parameter. In our update method, we already have an if statement that is checking whether the character is moving. If it is, we'll set the isMoving parameter to true on the animator. We'll then add an else statement and set it back to false when the character isn't moving. Let's save the script and switch back to Unity to try it out. Now our character starts and stops running at the correct time. In future videos we'll look at how we can add animations for jumping and falling, and how we can improve our transitions further with animation blend trees. Ok, that covers everything for this video, hope you found it useful. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys!